chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum chicka cha cha doom doom chicka cha cha doom doom bum Cameron Schreiner here from Georgia Tech, and welcome back to Love Bam. In today's episode, we're going over touch sensor programming. I'm going to give you some basic code to show you how this thing works, and then also show you a simple use in competition. So grab a robot with a touch sensor and a computer, and let's get started. All right, so now that Lego is open, uh, if you are not using this robot educator, it kind of gets in the way and takes up programming space, so I normally just X out of this guy. Next, for the name of this program, I'm just going to name it Touch Basics for now. And then hit Go. Now if you see this, this is the Advanced Palette. We don't really need that right now, so let's switch to the Common Palette, which is this little green circle here on the bottom. So let's create a very simple program for the Touch Sensor. Let's say our robot is going to move forward forever until the touch sensor is pressed. So to do that, let's drag and drop a movement block into our program. Make sure your motors, the ones that are used to drive your robot, are checked. And let's just make it go forward. Set the power to 50. And the duration to unlimited. Now let's add the touch sensor code. Hover over this little hourglass, which is the wait command, and the touch sensor is the one with the finger pushing the button. Click and drag that into your program. Now if you notice, the default port is port 1. You don't have to use that port, just if you change it on your robot, remember to change it in the programming. But for now, let's stick to default port 1. Now the touch sensor is very easy. It only has three options, pressed, released, and bumped. So we want it pressed, so that way once our touch sensor is pressed, our robot will stop. So let's add the stop code. Drag another movement block into your program, and click the stop sign. So now our robot will drive forward forever, wait until the touch sensor is pressed, and then stop. So let's go ahead and download this to the robot and see what happens. Wait for it to compile, and we are good to go. It's time for some handheld camera action. Let's see what that program we just downloaded does. Okay, so we downloaded the program Touch Basics. It's a simple program, but let's see how it would work in the field. So if you notice, just like we asked, the robot stopped the second it hit the truck, the second that touch sensor was pressed. So the issue is, though, if you notice, the truck moved just a little bit off to the side. Now, if we were trying to get this truck to a specific location during competition, that slight movement could mess us up. So, a personal suggestion for competition is you probably shouldn't use the touch sensor for any of the game pieces that are not Velcroed down. Another hint is you could use the touch sensor to know when you've hit a wall to tell you where you are in the field, so that way your robot can orient itself correctly. Okay. So now that we're done going over the very basics of the touch sensor, we can now move on to something else. So thanks for watching LaBam, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode when we go over the light sensor.